Cool. Okay. Um, as Lyra said, I'm a software engineer here at Medium, and I work mainly on the platforms team. Um, so I'm going to be talking about something that typically isn't discussed a lot, uh, especially in the GraphQL world, which is error handling. Um, so first off, let's start with uh, how we would any good talk about GraphQL with a GraphQL query. Um, so let's make a query for a user, um, and let's uh, pass in a username. It's Ev. I'm pretty sure this user exists. Um, and we'll ask for an ID and a name. Cool. And then we'll get something back that looks something like this. Cool. Um, so we have our data, we have a user, and we ask for an ID and a name. We have the ID and the name Ed Williams. Awesome. Um, so, perfect. So what happens when we don't get what we want? So we're asking for a user and the uh, user isn't there. Um, well, canonically in uh, GraphQL, all errors are stored by default in the errors array. Um, that's just kind of where they go. And this is like what happens when you start using GraphQL for the first time. This is where you can expect them to be, is in this errors array. All the errors end up here. Um, so let's look at what a query might look like for a user that doesn't exist. So okay, well, the same exact query. Um, and the username is not ev. Uh, that user is not real. Um, so what happens? Let's make the query. And we get something that looks like this. So this is a lot. Um, so we have our data here, the user is null, and then we have all these errors. It kind of tells you ish like what's going on. Um, we have a path, which is the user, um, and then we have locations like line, column, and then we have some extensions in there. Um, so it'll be telling us like medium object not found, type two, this is like an enum. Um, and so this is like how you would use GraphQL normally, is you get this giant errors array. Um, and this is how we started with error handling. So keep in mind that for multiple errors, um, they would also appear in the error array like this. So this is just for a user, but um, for if we had uh, errors for a user and a post, it would still appear in this errors array. Okay, so um, let's get into like, what are some problems with this? So for one, all errors are treated the same. Um, all errors end up in this errors array, no matter what they are. Um, it doesn't matter where they came from, they all end up in this errors array. Um, also, it's a little hard to know where exactly this error came from. We can kind of get an idea um, by looking at the line and the column. Um, but for more complicated queries, it starts to get hard, like, which user is this? We can kind of figure it out. And if you have, like, a list of, uh, 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 querying for, like, a list of users, um, which user was it? Um, so that gets a little difficult to, to know. And then also, it's a little hard for the client to know what errors to care about. Um, the client gets all these errors in this errors array. And so it's kind of hard to know which ones are important. Like, which ones do this, does the client care about? Do they care about all of them? Um, so before we get into, like, solutions with this, um, let's just talk about, like, what is an error? Um, so things that you might get back from your server are things like internal server error, not found, um, maybe you get, like, a bad gateway, this is unavailable in your country, um, suspended user. So these are all examples of what you might get back in a response. Um, Cool. So those don't really seem all the same to me. Um, so like bad gateway, for example, um, is that the same as a not found? Bad gateway seems a little more severe. Um, so I would say those like, are not the same thing. Um, what about an internal server error versus a suspended user? Those also don't seem the same to me. Like an internal server error seems pretty bad. Like someone should get paged for that, but you shouldn't get paged if someone's like a suspended user. That seems like a pretty normal thing that would happen. Um, so I don't think those are really the same. Um, so this kind of leads us into something that uh, I like to call error categories. So it seems like there's just two categories of things. We have things like internal server error, bad gateway, and then we have things like not found and unavailable in country and suspended user. Um, to me, these are totally different things. Um, so the things that are circled in red, I would say these are like fatal errors. These are things that are like really bad. Maybe someone should get paid for these. Um, these aren't like, you know, okay to have. Um, and then also things like these. Uh, I would call these like alternative results. They're not really errors. They're not like alternative facts though because those are definitely not true. Um, but these results are like, are they errors? Not really. They're like okay things to have. Um, so, okay, so what do we do about this? Um, so first let's kind of walk through what it would look like if we had a fatal error. Um, so, cool, so we have our awesome medium.com, um, so our client will make a request. Um, we're hitting the GraphQL endpoint to our GraphQL server, 
And that'll probably hit maybe some service. Cool. Um, but maybe that service is like on fire. Um, so things are going wrong, I don't know. And then, so maybe the service sends back like, ah, like 500. Um, and then that goes to a GraphQL server and it sends back something like 500 internal server error. Cool, so what do we do with that? Um, so we probably display something like a 500. Um, that's pretty much all you get. So if something bad happens, the client just tries to like handle it and be like, okay, yeah, like 500. Um, so I would say that fatal errors, um, they don't really cause the client to change behavior. I would say if you have a fatal error, um, the client doesn't really need to do anything super differently. They just need to like handle the thing and that's it. Um, so let's kind of look at alternative results. Cool. So same kind of thing. We have our client and it's going to make a request to our, uh, our GraphQL endpoint. It's our GraphQL server. Um, and then maybe it's our microservice. Um, so maybe we're asking for a user or something. Um, and we might get something back like, uh, okay, like a user, like we don't know who that user is or hey, this isn't available in your country. Um, and so then it's basically like our, our microservice is like, huh? Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what these things are. So we might send something back um, to our GraphQL server that's like, uh, suspended user, unavailable in your country. Um, and those are things that the client can kind of decide what to do. So we can be like, ah, oops, sorry, like that sucks. Or maybe we could say like, oh, this isn't available in your country or like, I don't know, anything. Um, so we can just like display something else when we can make a decision on it. Um, so I would say that Alternative results um, uh, are like the client behavior actually can change based on these results. Um, so unlike fatal errors where you just need to like handle the thing, your client can do something a little different based on what you get back. Um, so let's refresh on what we're looking to fix here. So our errors array has all these errors in it um, and it kind of is like all these errors are treated the same. They're all like the same severity of error. Um, also, it's kind of hard to know where exactly this error came from. Is it, like, is it from this user or this user? Is it from this post or this post? And it's also hard for the client to know what errors to care about. Um, do they care about all the errors that they get in that errors array or only some of them? Um, cool. So let's kind of get into what we might do to fix this and make it better. Um, so let's look at the schema. Because who doesn't love union types? So let's get into it. Uh, so, so we have this schema and say we have something like a post. And then we have, we're talking about our, our alternative results. So maybe we have not found, blacklisted, unavailable. So really I would say you have a post or you have some like errors or alternative results. Um, and I would kind of call it like, say that these are kind of like the same thing. You can have all of these, are the same sort of thing. I would call these like a post result. So a post result, you have a post. Um, or you have not found, or you have blacklisted, or you have unavailable. So these are all sort of like the same sort of result. You're getting a result back. It could be a post, it could be not found. Um, those are kind of like the same thing. Um, cool. So what's, what else is cool with this um, new scheme we have? Um, well, what else is cool is that, so we have a not found, but maybe we want to add additional fields to this. Maybe we want something like a message. Um, so we can add that as part of our alternative result. Um, we could also have something like maybe the reason someone was blacklisted or on unavailable maybe it was like a DMCA takedown link. So we can actually start customizing um, what each of these results looks like by adding additional fields. So that actually makes it like a lot nicer than what we had before. Um, so we're going to get into some code but before we do I just want to like let you know that this is uh, going to include some sangria um, which means we're going to have some Scala so don't be alarmed. It's going to be cool. Um, also, uh, we use protocol buffers here, and we use that as our schema. And we're able to derive um, all of our schema from our protocol buffers. So derive is kind of like a sangria thing. You can basically take our protocol buffer schema and just turn it into our GraphQL schema. Um, I promise it's pretty much exactly the same under the hood, but the code I'm going to show you is using derive. Cool. Um, so let's look at this. So first off, we'll have our user. Um, like I said, uh, it's a derive object type here. Um, so this is just a normal user. You'll probably find things on this like ID, name, username, that sort of thing. Um, and then now we can just start adding our error types. So we can have our suspended. Again, this can have like additional fields on it, but we've defined this already in our protocol buffer. Um, and then like things like not found, um, blacklisted, and unavailable in country. Cool. So we can derive all of these things. Again, these might have like additional fields on them, like 
a message or a reason, or the DMC, DMCA takedown link, things like that. Cool, so now we have all these things. Now we can actually build what our user result looks like, this cool union type. So let's take a look at that. Um, cool, so we have our, our user result, it's a union type, and basically it's like, this is either a user or it's the reason we can't get one normally. Again, this is just kind of like a result. So we can fill it out, um, and it's just gonna be a list of all the possibilities we would have. So we could have user, not found, suspended. Um, what's extra cool about this is that we can kind of customize these to a specific entity in GraphQL. So say for a user we care about not found and suspended, but maybe for a post we say it's like not found or blacklisted or we have the like unavailable in country, we can get, we get to customize these uh, results. Cool, so now that we've built out our entire uh, schema, we can actually make a query, let's make a query. Cool, so same query as before, it's gonna look a little different. Um, so now we're querying on a user result, but we're still gonna pass in username, so we're gonna use ev, because we know that person exists. Um, and then we're gonna ask for a type name, so this is just, we wanna see what type it is, because we have a user result now, so it's gonna look a little different. Um, and then this is how you query for a union. Um, so we have a user, so we're gonna query the user, and on that user we wanna get an ID or a name. And maybe that user isn't there. So if they're not there, we, would, we wanna like look for the not found um, error, or alternative result, and we'll ask for a message. And on suspended, we want a message and a reason. So we get to uh, query for exactly what we, we want. So we're gonna do this, um, so F does exist, so let's make the query. Cool, so we got a bunch of data back. Um, as you can see here, it's a user result, but the type is user. Um, and then we get the user fields back. Cool, so that's what we expected. Um, but let's get to the fun part, which is what happens when we query for something where we don't get the user back? So what does this look like? Again, this is the same query, um, but we're asking for not found and suspended. So not ev is not a real user. So let's take a look at what happens when we query for that. Cool, so we get some data back, and notice that the type here is not found. So this is like our type that we defined in our schema. Um, so, and it comes along with a little message, says user not found, at ev, not ev. Cool, so this is actually pretty awesome. We're able to, the client's able to um, use the different union types, and it's actually just one user. Um, and it doesn't have to do anything really super special. Um, so one last thing, uh, what happens when we get some of those fatal errors? So again, we're gonna make the same query, um, but say our server's on fire, or one of our microservices is not doing so hot. Um, so we'll make that query, and we'll get something back like this. We've seen this before. So now we have this like clear distinction between results that aren't really errors and then things that are actually errors, and these appear here. Cool. Okay, so let's talk about what we actually did here. What, what's better? Um, well, we have errors that are customizable for each entity. That's pretty cool. Uh, a user will have different alternative results uh, than a post will, and we can add different errors and customize fields for each type. So if we have a user, um, we can ask for those specific things, like uh, maybe there's a suspended, or not found, but for posts, maybe we don't care about suspended. Maybe we don't even have those in our result. Um, also, we know exactly where the error came from because it's attached to the entity. It's a part of the result itself. So now we can exactly figure out where they come, they, uh, each of the things comes from, and we can decide what to do based on that. And also, uh, most importantly, the client gets to decide what errors it cares about and uh, where those errors uh, came from and where, uh, what errors it can ignore. Um, so the client can decide to query or not query for different errors. Um, so maybe when we're querying for uh, the user and we get a not found, we care about that, but maybe we don't care if they're suspended or not. We just will do something else. Um, so the client gets to decide what's important. And I don't know about you, but that's the one thing that I've learned about GraphQL is that we do what the client wants. Whatever the client wants is like the most important. They get to decide uh, what they get back. Cool. Um, so yeah, so this, this uh, new distinction has been working for us pretty well, and it's helped us avoid a lot of the error types we've encountered before. And it's working well enough that we're using it in production right now. Um, so. Cool, so we've seen here uh, how we at Medium approach like error handling and how we deal with different classes of errors and how we always keep the clients in mind. I hope this has been helpful, thanks.